for its later effect on inheritance. Acceptance into the paternal family and the shame it brings to the family if a girl becomes pregnant before undergoing the traditional puberty rites. Families go the extra mile to ensure that what might be a future stigma on the family is effectively averted. Conversely, if those customary rites have been performed and the girl is observed to be with child before her betrothal or engagement, she is diligently interviewed by her own parents as to who the boy or man responsible for that pregnancy was. Upon that disclosure, a delegation of aunties is sent with a customary libation of one bottle gin or schnapps as a token of enquiry. We call it hobby modern to the parents of the named person with the euphemistic message. This is the message. Well, the parents of such and such a girl have reported that they do not see their daughter well. And upon inquiry, the girl has pointed to your so-and-so son or man as being responsible. So the parents will kindly suggest that the suspect's family enter into consultations with their named son or man. It is to be noted that even though the person supposedly responsible for the pregnancy is specifically named by the pregnant girl, it is not to that named suspect directly or personally, but to his parents or head of his parental family that the enquiry is directed. This is because we have a Gandangbe adage that goes like this, Keto ya yengmale akejo enuncho, literally meaning that the insult for the misdeeds of a stray goat is spewed on its owner. This bears out the stance in the traditional custom. Usually, the parents of the family receiving the enquiry or complaint about a girl's pregnancy will accept the traditional token of enquiry drink and promise a date certain to give their response. If the boy or man accepts responsibility readily, his parents or family reciprocates with another bottle of the same drink and sends it back to the enquiring family through the responding family's own emissaries as the customary Hono dafa, as in a gesture of positive confirmation of responsibility and acceptance of the pregnancy. If, on the other hand, there is a denial of any involvement with a said pregnant girl, the parents of the aggrieved party send their own delegation of aunties to announce the denial. The pregnant girl is again very diligently examined to confirm the suspect or who else, if any, could have been responsible. If she consistently names the same person, then the delegation is sent back for a second time. Should it become necessary to send the delegation for a third time, which very rarely happens, the named suspect was produced for face-to-face -face confrontation in the presence of all the delegations, his own parents or family members, and the pregnant girl. It is at this exchanges that any knowledge or observations of undue attention wooing, accosting, or futile nocturnal visits by another man as observed by the concerned family members are adduced. Should the boy or man admit carnal knowledge of the girl, even if for just a one night stand, but still claims not to be convinced that it was his single act that had resulted in the pregnancy, the paternal delegation would entreat him or his family to name any other person who they had observed to be going steady with a girl. In extreme cases of continuing banter and denial, the man is symbolically presented with a spoon, what we call awale or ladle, ato, to scoop out his semen, which he thought might not have resulted in that pregnancy from the inside of the girl. Usually, it is only a spoken threat but it does not really get to that stage. But if after all this, the man still denies responsibility, the paternal family apologizes with another set of drinks for making the inquiry, supposedly at the wrong family's door. They would even dare the accused family to name its terms for restitution. On the birth of a child, especially where a disputing father disclaims responsibility for the pregnancy, the newborn baby's physical features are minutely subjected to inspection, examination or observations by 
experienced elderly women with trained eyes from the paternal family. They thoroughly examined the baby from hair on its head to the texture of the skin of the sole of its feet. Their verdict was, in most cases, acceptable to both the maternal and the accused paternal families. Today, fortunately, scientific DNA tests have come to the rescue with a largely incontrovertible evidence of paternity. Where, despite all this, the suspect family still claims to entertain a lingering doubt, the maternal family will proceed to perform the outdooring dedication and naming ceremony on the eighth day. They will bestow on the baby the maternal family's own name. In very many cases, the disputing family would plead for time to further observe the features of the child as he or she grows. Families have been known to have reassembled to re-examine the features of the growing baby. Many, on the other hand, have simply let sleeping dogs lie to avoid the stigma and the implication that their daughter had not been cautious in her curiosity about sexual experimentation. The whole process is as stringent as this.